graphic novels. Maybe you've heard about them. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you love them. Maybe you hate them. Maybe you don't even care. But you should care because graphic novels tell stories in an amazing way and they use pictures and words to create beautiful images that teach very powerful lessons to the reader. And we're going to be reading a graphic novel in this class. But maybe you're asking yourself, Mr. Notham, where did graphic novels come from? Well, we got to go back in time. In the 1930s, newspapers had funnies in them. Um, they came out on Sunday called the Sunday Funnies, and they got so popular, someone decided they were going to take the funnies and compile them into a book. It was called Famous Funnies, and it got really big, and that was the first comic book. But it was just goofy stuff. Then, two guys had an idea. They made Superman, the first superhero ever, and he could accomplish anything. He was a big hit, especially during World War II, because it was a dark and dreary time. And I mean, this was a superhuman being who could conquer the Nazis. Here we have him saying to Hitler, I'd like to land a strictly non-Aryan sock on your jaw, but there's no time for that. You're coming with me while I visit a certain pal of yours. Put me down! You're hurting me! It's a pretty good Hitler impersonation. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Well, Superman got huge, and guess what? Superheroes blew up. Everybody started making these comic books, and they got very, very popular because these guys were heroes that could accomplish anything and save World War II and, and save America from all the stuff that was going on. Well, World War II ended. And when World War II ended, soldiers came home, and suddenly they didn't need these superheroes. They wanted to focus instead on their families. Well... To make matters worse, well, for comic books at least, this guy Frederick Wortham, he starts saying that comic books are destroying kids and making them lustful, crazy, murderous, and people believed his book. And so they, uh, his book was called Seduction of the Innocent. And so they were st uh, stipulations were put on comic books. They couldn't have violence. They couldn't have this. And what do you have now? You got Superman in the kitchen. And comic books become hokey and dumb instead of cool and filled with action. And so for quite a while, nobody really liked comic books that much. And at least they weren't a very powerful um, source for stories. Until Frank Miller wrote The Dark Knight Returns. I mean... A lot of things helped to make it graphic novels bigger, but that was a very big part of it because The Dark Knight Returns was a beautiful story tackling real issues filled with beautiful art. And suddenly, graphic novels became less goofy comic book stuff and more important stories. Well, today we have a lot of graphic novels. They're very popular. Um, American Born Chinese by Jean Luen Yang, for example, is one of my favorites. It was the Prince Book of the Year. Another novel of his, Boxers and Saints, was actually a Yelsa finalist for Book of the Year. And these books, they tell amazing stories with amazing pictures and just capture something very, very powerful. We're going to be reading American Born Chinese. Uh, for our reading, you need to know how to read a comic book or graphic novel. So please take a minute to uh, read through this graphic here that shows you how to read a comic book or a graphic novel and then please start your reading of American Born Chinese for class tomorrow I know you're going to enjoy this book it is one of my all time favorites and I know you're going to love graphic novels seriously they're the coolest guys I will see you tomorrow at class bring American Born Chinese see you then bye bye